Hello and welcome to Secrets of a Money Making blog. This is a special presentation of a webinar put together by myself, Carol Tice, from the Make a Living Writing blog and Ann Wayman from About Freelance Writing. We presented this event twice and had some technical problems recording it, so I am creating this special presentation which is going to include all the material we presented as well as um, a lot of the best questions that we got from both of the different uh, presentations that we did of this material. I'll get started by just telling you a little bit about our background. Anne is a longtime freelance writer who has been published by Hazelden. She has uh, edited newspapers and magazines, ghostwritten two bestsellers. She coaches writers, and her writing blog is about freelance writing. I am Carol Tice. I'm a longtime freelance writer for Entrepreneur, BNET, The Seattle Times, Copy Blogger, and many others. My corporate clients include Costco, American Express, and Dun & Bradstreet, and my blog is one of Write to Dun's top 10 blogs for writers of 2011, and I mentor writers looking to grow their income. Um, we will be, I did give out uh, door prizes in both these presentations, and I'll let you know who won and talk about their questions as we go through the presentation. To give you a quick overview of what is in this event, first we talk about all the different ways you can earn from your blog. Then we, there's a question period and I'll talk about the prizes that we have given out. And then in the second part we talk about all the different ways to market your blog and build the audience you need so that you can use your monetizing strategies to sell things to them. We take some more questions and then there will be some special offers for people who viewed this live. And you can always chat about this event by using the, the Twitter hashtag blog secrets over on Twitter. Uh, I wanted to do this presentation with Anne and she did create half the material that I'll be presenting because uh, she and I use different monetizing strategies. So between the two of us, we have a nice variety of experience to share. Um, and I'm going to get started with our 14 different ways that you can monetize your blog. And when I talk with writers, I find that often if they're frustrated that their blog isn't earning so much, and I ask them how they're trying to earn through the blog, usually they are only using maybe one or two, maybe three strategies, but there's a lot of different ways to consider that might bring in some income for your blog. Uh, one of the best known is to use online ads. You can sell ads on your site. Uh, Google AdSense is one of the easiest programs it's free to participate in. You can see some Google ads there on the right. And you can also sell individual display ads yourself, like you see below there, the Adverflex jobs. And ads come in a lot of different formats. You can also still see things like uh, text link ads, where you'll see the double underline under keywords inside of a blog post, and those will link to products for sale. And some big sites do that. U.S. News and World Report uh, does text link ads. Uh, there are other ad networks besides the Google AdSense program like Chitika and EntreeCard. There's many of these to look at. Another strategy is to affiliate sell the products of other people. So instead of letting Google kind of select the things that are going to be sold, you do that yourself and um, specifically choose the products that you are going to sell. Uh, one of the best known affiliate programs is Amazon's. It's pretty easy to put up a card and you can just plug in whatever products you think your audience 
would be interested in. Uh, I've used a little bit different strategy, which was to try to get a sense of what my audience already loves and buys and to sell just a few select things and only things that I have personally used and really highly recommend. And I have those grouped on my side on a products I love tab like you see on the right there. And that keeps my homepage from getting too ad cluttered. Uh, if you have a small circulation, it, payments from affiliate sales will probably start sort of small, but they will build up and uh, how to deal with the Suite 101 that was an affiliate arrangement that paid her for every writer who signs up and writes for that platform. So those are some examples of affiliate selling approaches and strategies. One of the most powerful ways to earn from your blog is to create your own products. Whether you make pottery or you sell ebooks, uh, you can sell that stuff from your blog. Creating your own products is something that has many positive benefits uh, besides obviously it being something where you keep all the revenue. Uh, it Selling people products that are authored by you or created by you uh, really helps build your own brand and your reputation. To do it, you need e-commerce capability through PayPal or ClickBank or I use eJunkie. Um, and you can really sell about anything from your blog, a physical product you ship or an e-book or e-course that you download. And you do need some kind of platform to ex accept payments, make sure it can, it can take credit cards as well as you know, just PayPal to uh, get the most sales. Along with creating your own products, you can also sell services. Um, a lot of people use their blog as a way to sell consulting services of some kind that they might deliver on the phone. This is a uh, this graphic on the left is a Stone Soup Virtual Cookery School, and they sell online cooking classes that they hold. Um, your blog is a great way to establish kind of your authority voice and make people want to hire you as you know a service provider. And it's also a great place to learn about what services you should offer. You can pull your readers to try and discover what services you might be able to sell them. Number five is this kind of flips affiliate selling on its head. Um, if you have created your own products, you can then start an affiliate program and let others sell your products for a commission. You usually want to offer a pretty nice sized commission, uh, around 50% to get people interested in doing it. Uh, you want to stress to affiliates that they cannot discount your prices you can just solicit affiliates directly through your blog or you could submit your products to a platform like ClickBank and let people just kind of browse through there and find it and hopefully uh, most systems that you set up to manage affiliates uh, such as iDev or eJunkies program will set up a program that pays them on some regular automatically triggered basis if they hit a hundred dollars or once a month it'll issue payments so it's fairly easy to administer uh, another great earning tactic is to enter into partnerships team up with a partner it lets you access another audience that isn't your blog's audience but is that other person's audience. It means two people are marketing the product or event and obviously from the ad on the right and the fact that there are two presenters for this webinar I tells you that this is a partnership. Um, I'm, a, I'm highly in favor of doing partnership events. They can also be a way to grow your subscriber list because generally 50% of the people who sign up will not be from your own list and those are new names to you and you can then invite them to subscribe after the event. You can make them a special offer and say, 
hey, subscribe to my blog too, and you know, I'll send you a freebie of some kind. It's a great way to build your own list. And it's important when you're doing a partnership to get your deal in writing, understand who owns the the product that you're creating together, how you're allowed to use it. Just, uh, you know, you don't want any disagreements about that later. The structure that I've used that I really like is what I call 100%, 100% ownership, which means that both the people have full rights to use the product in any way they want. They can charge for it, give it away as an incentive, basically do it as they please with it in the future. I think uh, making it more complicated than that can cause a lot of headaches, but whatever you decide, you know, get your agreement in writing and make sure you're all clear about uh, who owns what. So one of the most common uh, ways, and to me easy ways, to use your blog to earn money is to treat the whole blog as kind of an audition piece to get paid writing assignments. And that's pretty much been my number one way of using my blog to earn. To position your blog to help you do that, there's kind of three important things to do on your blog. One is to really stick to your niche. You don't want to be writing about the business of writing and then suddenly be writing about the Japanese earthquake or something else in the news. Uh, prospective clients want to see that you understand how to stick to a topic. They also want to see that you understand blog mechanics, you know, that you know how to put a photo on and you've got social sharing buttons, you know how to write a strong headline, you know how paragraphs should be short and, you know, posts shouldn't go on and on forever. So they, they want to know you that you sort of understand blog format. And it can be a really useful uh, way to get a lot of a lot of interest from prospective businesses that might need a blogger or someone to write content on their site. Uh, the final element that you need is just that your posts really need to be strong. Uh, my philosophy is to write each blog post like it's a dollar a word magazine article. I really take the posts very seriously and uh, think of them like an assignment I would get from an editor because that quality is what's forming my audition piece. So as you grow your audience, another way to earn money is through subscriptions and memberships. You can sell monthly access to a program or a service and the graphic there is for pro bloggers, a monthly membership community. Um, that uh, started, I gather, by charging $1.99 a month, and now it's up to almost $6 a month. If you get, you know, hundreds of people interested, this can really add up. And the thrill of monthly membership earning is that it's fairly predictable income. You have a sense of how many subscribers you have and how much you're going to make, and you can kind of schedule your activities that you're going to provide the group based on the revenue that's coming in. There's a plugin for uh, WordPress users called Wishlist Membership that makes it easy to set up and make sure the fees get collected monthly. And as with the other e-commerce functions, you need some kind of platform like PayPal or eJunkie to bill your community and collect the money. But uh, these can be a great way to engage with your audience and offer a lot of value and get a predictable revenue stream. So another thing you can do as your readership grows is to look at sponsorship deals. And this little graphic is just one I happened on online. It was a blog about kidney health and they had found a healthcare company that was sponsoring their blog. I think the thing a lot of people don't know about sponsorships is that you can proactively reach out to companies that you think might sponsor a blog, might want to reach your kind of audience. A lot of major corporations have a big commitment to 
promoting themselves through sponsorships. They like that mode, which is sort of a sort of soft sell way for them to promote themselves. And you can just uh, call up their marketing departments and just inquire about whether they might be interested in a sponsorship. They also might, rather than sponsoring your whole site, might sponsor a event you're doing or a particular feature on your site, a particular page, so you can break it down that way too. Another kind of creative niche way to realize some revenue from your blog is as your email subscriber list grows, you can sell ads that just appear on your outgoing emails to your list. And on the right here is an example from uh, Writers Weekly, which is a very large circulation uh, email newsletter. And you can see that above the latest from Angela Hoy, the uh, creator of this list, is just a nice little text ad from the Writers Bookstore that I think gives you a good example that it, it doesn't even have to be very graphically uh, fabulous to earn for you. It can be very simple. So another thing that a lot of the top bloggers have in, in their pay array of what they earn from their blog is speaking fees. If as you do your blogging, you become a topic expert, uh, you may get approached and or you know be able to get someone to represent you and help you find speaking gigs at conventions and professional association events. It uh, tends to be something that kind of comes a little bit later in the game. I know that uh, pro blogger Sharon Rouse always counts this as sort of one of his revenue streams. So this one is a classic, the donation button. It's been around a long time and is actually what Leo Babauta at Zen Habits used when he first started. Uh, for most blogs, this won't be a, a big money earner, but depending on the niche you're in, if it's something sort of civically minded or charitable in some way, sometimes a donation button can be something that people will respond to. I actually had a someone email me the other day and say that I should put one onto my blog, which I thought was interesting. But, you know, the thing about donation buttons is that it's not, you know, revenue you can count on in any way. So, but it's something to think about. One of the sort of end stage strategies for monetizing your blog is to sell the whole thing. Uh, blogs can and are bought and sold. On the right there is the announcement of the sale of freelance writing gigs, which uh, was sold last year to Splash Press Media. You need a lot of traffic and hopefully a sought after domain name. Uh, there are people who start up blogs with the express purpose of just ramping them up quickly and selling them off. Another big that was one that was sold was uh, mint.com. That was just an individual startup that was sold to bank rate for a large quantity of money. And, you know, think about the domain names that you're you're capturing. Anne pointed out to me that uh, Coke.com was not originally owned by Coca-Cola. So if you have a situation like that, you might just uh, make a quick sale of your blog. So the last point I wanted to cover in this uh, section is the issue of how your blog is sort of slanted. There's kind of two ways to go with it. One is to simply have a blog that is about your writing business and is very straightforward about the fact that you're a writer and you're looking to get hired. As you can see on the left there with this blog I came across uh, called Blogging Tune, you can see it's got a Hire Me tab right on it. and. Um, the articles are all about writing, so it's just very direct that it's an audition piece to get writing gigs. And another way to go is to do a blog in a niche you like that has a you know more of an obvious direct monetizing strategy. And the example I'm showing on the right there is a site that's actually really a riot uh, called Toy With Me, where several different women bloggers talk in great detail about their personal romantic lives and they also review and sell sex toys and that is their main monetizing strategy and if you ever want to read some hilarious 
hilarious blog posts. You can check that out. I would bet that they also get hired to write off of this site because the writing's very creative and sparkling. And so that's another way to go about it is to just do a niche you're passionate about that isn't writing, but to just do great writing about something you love and use that to uh, audition yourself as well. So I wanted to circle back to some of the great questions that we got about this first half of the material. Uh, Amy had had a question about, she does uh, video reviews and, you know, artist reviews, and she had a concern about using videos and images on, you know, a blog that you're seeking to earn from. And I actually do this for quite a few of my clients. And when it comes to still images, you need to look at where you're getting the image from and what the, you know, what the permission format is. If you're somewhere like Flickr Creative Commons, you're free to use it with a link that attributes the photo, for instance. If you're somewhere like YouTube and there's an available embed code for a video, essentially that artist is inviting you, you know, begging you really to spread their content around. And I've embedded videos like that on, you know, very large traffic paying blogs and never heard any kind of objection. In you know, in general, I think people are hoping you will reproduce and talk about their art because it eventually sells them more of it. So just be careful about how you're citing and attributing things if they need that attribution. Um, there was a discussion about what uh, blogging platform to put this on. And the thing you want to stay away from is being on a platform where you have the dot WordPress or dot blogger in your name. You want to pay for a URL so that you have your own name. And WordPress does seem to be the most flexible, easy, and has the most available themes and plugins and widgets to dress it up. Uh, it seems to be pretty much the predominant platform to work with now. Out another important issue that we wanted to talk about is uh, Google Ads and the sort of the the pros and cons of doing that. Obviously, it's easy. It can generate some easy money. And a lot of people, including Anne, say that I, it works out fine for them. They don't really get a lot of complaints from viewers. And other people are very down on using something like Google Ads. The thing that, there's a couple things about it that made me steer away from it. The first is that you're not completely in control of what appears. You plug in some keywords, but there's just a lot of stories about people finding stuff that's very inappropriate in there or just not relevant to their audience. And the other thing to consider when you put up ads is that when people click on those, they leave your site and go somewhere else to buy something. And the question is whether it's worth it to you kind of losing that customer who might stay on your site and maybe buy more expensive things from you directly in the future for, you know, a $1 commission on a book or something. So it's a question you have to ask yourself. And the main thing I'd say is if you have Google Ads up and they're not earning anything, take them down. It means your your audience isn't responding to that or your audience isn't big enough yet for that to really work. Um, if ads are up and they're not earning, then they may just be annoying people and you might as well take them off and look at other strategies. I think we yeah gave out a couple of door prizes here and one of them, uh, the mini mentoring went to Michelle. She had asked a great question. She is in, a, in the food niche, which is a pretty crowded place and wanted to know about ways to distinguish her blog and make it stand up from the pack. Two basic schools of thought there. One is to make it very specific in terms of the niche, something like cooking for one or cooking with your kids in the kitchen, uh, where it's, you know, really clear and it's a really specific audience. The other thing you can do 
with a blog in a busy niche is to think about what you're presenting tonally and kind of in terms of your attitude. Maybe you're the snarky food blogger or you're the snobby food blogger or you're the low fat food blogger or you're the uh, hilarious, you know, humorous food blogger. So there are things you can do with your kind of your persona and your tone to set yourself apart as well. And then um, Kathy Davis won free business cards from nextdayflyers.com. And I think her question was about um, whether it's worth it to promote yourself on Facebook. And I'm going to get more into that in this second half of the presentation, which is on all the ways to market your blog. And the thing I like to say about blog marketing is that when you create a, if you create a tool, say if you go to the hardware store and you buy a hammer, when you get home, you don't expect the hammer to pick itself up and start hammering nails. And it's the same thing with your blog. When you've created a blog post, you've created a tool, and then you've got to go out and use that tool to promote yourself and promote your blog and promote your content and bring people and to find out about you and learn about you. So, you know, I think there's a, often initially the fantasy that you'll put a blog post on your blog and people will magically come over and read it and, and love you. And, and it just doesn't really usually work that way. You have to get out there and let people know your blog exists. And these are so the ways you can do that. I put this one at number one because a lot of people feel it is the most important way to do it these days. And that is to find some celebrity blogger friends who will talk about your blog and do as you're seeing on that graphic, uh, retweet your blog post to their audience, mention you on their blog, let you guest post on their blog. These are all great strategies for finding new readers. A lot of people do believe now that the blogosphere is a very crowded place, that it is all about who you know in blogging. And if you're thinking, but how will I ever meet these incredibly famous influential bloggers? There really are quite a few strategies where you can connect with them, as you can see. I mean, Darren is in Australia or New Zealand, and I managed to get his attention on Twitter. And you can do it, too. Uh, you can do what I did here. You can target celebrity bloggers by uh, sending them a link and saying, you know, I think your readers might be interested in this, and they may send it on. You can comment on their blogs. I know a prominent editor who got his job just from the comments he left on that blog. You can meet them live at conferences. And another strategy I love is big bloggers are really overwhelmed and busy and sometimes you'll kind of see cries for help on their site. They want to know if they could get some volunteers to welcome new people to their monthly membership community, things like that. And those are great opportunities to build that relationship. See if you can, you know, take advantage of one. So I talked about this briefly before, but your blog needs to be hosted somewhere so it can be presented on the internet and the free platforms are where a lot of people get started, but they have some limitations and they don't present you as professionally as you would like if you're serious about earning and it's really worth investing in your own domain name and paid hosting. You know, you're talking about something like $100 a year if you're serious about your blog really being a money-making business, it's just a cost of business that you're really going to want to invest in. So email subscribers are kind of at the heart of the any earning strategy on your blog. When people sign up through RSS or in a feed, you do not capture their emails and you don't know who they are and you can't sell to them. So you very much want to drive email subscriptions over feed subscriptions over Twitter followers or Facebook fan page followers. Um, I did a free call with Stanford Smith from Pushing Social recently and I thought what he said really summed it up about your social media 
crowd, which is that those are interesting to have and good to have, but it's not a business model because once again, you don't have names and permission to market to those people. So the, the people who form the core of your sales base are your email subscribers. They are the people who are the enthusiastic enough about what you're doing to give up their email address to you and let you send them things. And one of the best ways to get more subscribers is to offer some kind of free product in exchange for subscribing. You will really see the number of subscriptions you get go up a lot. Another great way to drive signups is uh, to ask for them. It seems obvious, but at the bottom of your posts, you can put, if you enjoyed this, consider subscribing with a link, and that will also drive more subscribers. A key thing that I see on a lot of startup blogs is that the email signup isn't very easy to find. Put it up at the top of the, ch the page, on the top of the sidebar. It's really the most important thing for most blogs that you want visitors to do on your blog. So make give it a place of prominence and make that obvious so people know what to do. So once you have emails, besides just sending them out your recent blog posts, you can also send them a newsletter product, and that's something that Ann does. You can see that graphic right there. And that's an opportunity to make special offers to them, send them extra content that you don't put up maybe on the blog. It's exclusive for subscribers. And to do both email marketing campaigns and newsletters, you're going to want some kind of professional email marketing platform to do it on. Um, Anne uses GetResponse. I've been using MailChimp. A lot of people use Aweber. MailChimp is great because they ha are less stringent about letting you import an existing list from somewhere else, like if you have it on FeedBurner. It's free to 2,000 subscribers now, so there's kind of no reason not to use it, and it gives you a lot more flexibility in creating your forms and what they say and what they look like, and also gives you great analytics in terms of knowing how many people opened your email, clicked on the links inside your email, so you get a lot more data. It's highly worthwhile to uh, sign up for one of those programs. So we talked a little bit about this before, but another great way to spread the word about your blog is to just comment on other highly trafficked blogs in your niche. And something I do is I really am focused on blogs that have the tool Comment Love or something similar. And you can see in the graphic below that this is me actually commenting on Anne's blog. And you can see that her little comment love tool has picked up the title of my most recent blog post and added it to the bottom of my comment as a live link so that people could easily click over and come to my blog and I find that that's a pretty major source of traffic for me is that that comment love connection and of course you want to put that on your own blog because it really encourages people to leave comments so another way to get yourself known is to join a community, like some of the monthly subscription communities we were talking about that you can form on your own blog. Uh, you can join other people's. A-List Blogging Boot Camps is one I'm active in. Anne has been active in A-List and in Third Tribe and become a blogger. Um, besides just kind of spreading the word about your blog, they're a great source of help and support. You don't have to do it alone as a blogger. You can get a lot of answers from the community, meet great, helpful people, just make a lot of new connections and make a lot of friends that may often uh, come over and become your readers. So a really powerful strategy for getting new uh, readers and subscribers to your blog is to guest post on high traffic blogs. And you can do it. It's not uh, impossible to get yourself a guest post, as you can see there. This is me guest posting on Copyblogger. And I actually 
got that uh, from posting my links on Twitter. Uh, one of their editors approached me and asked me to guest. So, and we'll talk more about social media promotion shortly. But a guest post on a popular blog gives you valuable backlinks that improves your site's rankings and send, can send you many new readers. Most of these are for free and do expect to be edited. Don't be surprised when you look at the post when it goes up and it looks a little, maybe a little different than how you submitted it. They know their audience and they you know, will sculpt it to suit them. You, a great way to break into guest posting is first off, just look at sites that have a little bit more traffic than you doesn't have to be the top and kind of work your way up. Another thing is to look for top sites that solicit actively for guest posts. I believe on ProBlogger's site uh, somewhere they've just got writer's guidelines and it just says, hey, you know, give us a try. <laughs> send, us, send us a pitch. Uh, so those are wide open places for you to send a proposal to do a guest post. I, I recommend sending an idea first rather than sending a whole post cold. So another way to build your audience is to have guests over to your blog. Anne says, be daring and ask really well-known bloggers to guest on your blog, which is kind of a great idea. The worst thing they can do is say no. Um, be clear about the terms when you're having guest posts. You know, who owns the post? Can they reprint the post? If so, how long from now? You want to have that stuff defined. Another strategy that I use is ask if you have some readers that are really engaged, they're leaving a lot of comments, ask them to be a guest poster. I find that really gets them enthusiastic about your blog. They become really big fans. I see um, readers of mine that I've had guests on the on the blog over on Twitter, you know, raving about what I do and they just they become very big supporters and really help spread the word about the blog. So obviously, this is a topic that comes up a lot, but it's really important that when people finally get to your site, that the quality of what they find is really high. You're really going nowhere without delivering some really useful, well-crafted information that people want to read. Ideally, you know, something they can't find everywhere else uh, that's pretty unique to you. Uh, write it as well as you can. Don't expect perfection. Don't write it into the ground and take forever and be afraid to publish it. Uh, you want to get your posts out there and just keep improving your quality as you go. That's what all of us are doing. So search engine optimization or SEO is an important aspect of any successful blog. You sort of don't have to drive yourself crazy about it, but you should use keywords for your audience and phrases in places like your headline, your blog title and tagline, the first lines of posts, and that will really help search engines turn up your posts when people are searching on words about your niche, and that'll send readers to you. They'll see your, your post titles and click on them. You know, avoid SEO scams of people who say, you know, buy our product and it will make robots automatically send you thousands of new readers and, you know, you'll have a huge subscriber base overnight. I think we don't think any of those are real and the subscribers, the traffic that they send you is not necessarily people who are really right for your blog. They're just sort of people. So what you want is the right people. And you get those with the quality of your writing and with your own marketing. And uh, Anne recommends the site uh, Search Engine Land as a great place to learn more about SEO. And you can also use tools like Scribe, which is an SEO plugin that goes inside WordPress. And there's a link to that in the report that goes with this presentation. So you can learn more about it. This one is kind of my personal obsession. I reviewed about a hundred writer's blogs recently, and I can tell you that the lack of strong headlines was the number one biggest problem that I saw. When you write a headline that doesn't have keywords in it and doesn't tell us 
kind of what it's about or who is really the audience for it, then search engines do not find it, readers don't click on it, and nobody comes to your post. It's really, really important. If you don't change anything else out of this presentation, if you learn to write stronger headlines, it will really improve your blog a lot. It's really my top tip of what people should focus on. And one great way to construct your headline is to put it in the form of a question, as you see on this graphic, which is the title of the great report from Psychotactics, which is also linked in the PDF, uh, Why Do Some Headlines Fail? And he really provides a great practical analysis of how to construct a useful headline that will help drive traffic to your blog. So I want to go through some different forms of social media because social media is a major way that bloggers do promote themselves and get found and discovered. And the first one is Twitter, which is a really unique and fast-growing platform. And if you're not on it yet and you feel intimidated by it, know that only about 9% of people are on Twitter at this point. So really... It, it's early days and you can still get on and you can still get started and use it. I I recommend lurking a little. There's kind of some etiquette to how you use it. See how it works. Learn about how to use hashtags and start meeting people. Start following influential bloggers in your niche and you know forward their material. The key thing on Twitter is don't uh, make all of your posts, you know, a link to something you want to sell people or something. You don't want to be sort of so hard sell. Forward a lot of useful information from other people. It's a great place to uh, target influential bloggers and occasionally, you know, send them one of your posts. So a Facebook fan page is a sort of new and fast growing, really great way to connect with an audience in a different way. Um, Facebook has more than 500 million users. It's just an enormous audience, and there's no reason not to use it as a platform to connect with people. I find it it's a great place to have conversations with writers and find out what they're thinking and what they need. You can hold contests, take polls, ask questions. Uh, Ultimately, you want to send these people over to your blog to subscribe, but this can be a great place to get people's attention and get them interested in what you're doing. And while you're on Facebook, another approach is to do an ad for something that's going on on your blog, and over there on the right is the ad that I put together for this event. And um, the thing I love about Facebook ads is that you can make them link directly to to your blog. It doesn't have to go to your fan page. It can go to any URL. But uh, the best thing about it is you totally control your campaign as far as how much you're spending. You can tell it, I want to spend you know five dollars a day for two days, uh, or whatever. You, you're completely in control of the design of it. You can pay only when people have clicked on the ad, or you can pay for impressions. I'm kind of more of a fan of pay for click. I don't really care if it was on somebody's landing page, but they paid no attention to it. But you have that option either way. Just a, can be a very cost-effective way to reach a lot of people. I think one of the ads I did for one of my webinars, 260,000 people were exposed to it for something like $80. It just can be a really good value. So LinkedIn is a platform I like because everybody on it is really all business. Um, where on Twitter, it seems like half the people on there are just sort of goofing off. <laughs> uh, everyone on LinkedIn is really serious about their business. There's a lot of different ways you can use LinkedIn to meet people. And I have a link to a post I did that lays them all out. One of the most obvious ones that I'm showing here is that you can use their blog link tool to pull your blog onto your LinkedIn page and then it will show in all of your contacts blog roles as well on LinkedIn so that can be a great way to just sort of spread it around 
then I wanted to talk a little bit about bookmarking sites because I often see um, people with very new blogs that have the stumble upon and dig and those kind of bookmarks. And my sense is very strongly that those aren't really useful platforms until your blog has a much bigger audience. It's very hard to get any attention there. But Reddit is more of a level playing field. You can put a link on there and if people vote it up that they like it, it'll stay on the homepage you know, for a long time and get a lot of viewers and can send you traffic. And the best thing about it is that there's a lot of subgroups on Reddit. So you can put your link within a subgroup that is actually interested in your topic, which, you know, greatly increases your chances of getting some positive votes and getting attention from the kind of people you really want to attract. So I wanted to quickly talk about product landing pages because they're a really powerful way to sell, especially if you are doing your own products. When you create a landing page, it's a standalone page that is uh, usually hidden in your navigation. It's not a tab that's showing. It's sort of a, a secret page that you direct people to that has the room to go into a lot of detail about your product and kind of overcome everyone's objections to it, explain why it's an incredible bargain, uh, give testimonials about why it's great from people have used it. It gives you an opportunity to really present your whole case for why people should buy the product. It is a way more effective way to sell than simply having a uh, page with a whole bunch of products jammed on it where there's just sort of a sentence about each one. And I actually have on my own blog a uh, landing page like this that sells the idea of subscribing to my blog, just a short page, which is often called a squeeze page in marketing lingo. And that has been known to convert better than just the sign up box by itself. So it's, landing pages are not real super complicated to learn to create. They have about six, eight important elements that you put on them. And I just recommend learning a bit about it. And in the, uh, handout, I think we have a link to some people who I think do a great job teaching about how to create these, um, Naomi Dunford from Itty Biz and Dave Navarro, the launch coach. And they do some fun videos where they sit around on Naomi's couch and drink beer and cuss and talk about conversion at, that are really fun and informative. And landing pages are one of their, uh, main things. So I just recommend thinking about creating that. It's a more professional way and more effective way to sell your uh, sell your products on your blog. So another way to promote your blog is to go to events. Get out there, meet live humans, and talk to them about your blog. Way to form some strong relationships and potentially meet some of those influential celebrity bloggers that you're hoping to connect with. I am personally uh, doing that shortly, uh, heading off to SobCon in Chicago, which is the Strategic Online Business Conference. And, you know, if you're not flying anywhere, you can find somewhere local to go as well. Uh, public speaking is a great way to get out the word about your blog and can help you sort of build towards doing paid public speaking. So if you get asked to speak by a professional group or anything, any networking event in your area, you know, do it. Uh, it really builds your authority and credibility, presents you in a really positive, strong way. You can meet new fans and influential folks, and uh, it really helps build your credibility. I just think it, it's super positive. I had, I've had terrifically positive experiences from opportunities I've had to speak. So we had a few questions we wanted to get to about marketing. And um, Jonan, who came in all the way from the Philippines to participate in this event, uh, wanted to know how I built my audience. And I felt like it was a little bit of kind of almost every marketing strategy that you just saw. Like all, I think I've done all 15 of them. Definitely 
connecting with influential bloggers was really important to growing my readership. And, but I, I've really done all of these things and continue to do them all. Uh, oh, a big question about Twitter that I think Amy asked was um, about whether you should follow back everyone who follows you. And some people do do that. And I think that when you first get started, that's a really good way to you know, get a lot of followers yourself. But eventually you want to kind of start cutting back. I think the ideal is to have a lot more people following you than people you are following. That to me, when I see that on someone's Twitter profile, that tells me that I think they're an authority. They're a thought leader in their space. They don't have to follow everyone back. And it, it sort of clues me in that people are following them because they, uh, you know, have really useful information to present. They're not just, you know, recirculating a bunch of other people's junk. The other thing is if you follow back everyone, you end up with a tweet stream that isn't necessarily that useful to you. So I try and make it a real useful tool for me where it's kind of a collection of people I really, really respect and want to learn from. And... I don't want too many of them or they just kind of get lost in the giant, you know, role of everybody. But it's sort of two different strategies and philosophies to think about. So Anna gave Adore Prize as well, which is her new book uh, that's just coming out, Where to Search for Freelance Writing Jobs, which uh, gives all of the sources that she used to post the freelance writing jobs on about freelance writing. And uh, should be a great resource. And I believe that was run by uh, Heidi Cardenas. And then these are the uh, special offers that were made to, to uh, people who participated in the events live. If you're watching this afterwards, it is probably too late to do uh, the discount on the upcoming webinar. But if you want to contact me about mini mentoring, uh, I do offer anyone who participates or views any of my presentations the opportunity if you just have a few follow-up questions to get a half hour of mini mentoring for just 50 bucks. And if you're an original viewer of this, uh, please take our follow-up survey and watch your email for links to uh, special offers. Thanks so much.